At least 14 people have been killed after suspected bandits invaded Baban Rafi village in Zampara state. The attack, which occurred on Thursday in Gumi local government area of the state, also left many other villagers injured. The bandits were said to have stormed the village with over 40 motorbikes in the early hours of the day and opened fire on residents who were still indoors. During the invasion, the assailants scattered away with several valuables from the villagers, including money, mobile phones and livestock, among others. When contacted, the police authorities in the state confirmed the attack. The public relations officer in Zampara, Mohammed Shehu, revealed that the bandits, who were in large numbers, invaded Baban Rafi village from neighboring Kebi state. And joining us live now on the phone interview is security expert Kabir Adamu to talk about this. Hello, Kabir, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Thanks for joining us on News on the Hour. Now, is this a new strategy from these suspected bandits that we are seeing? And how do we ascertain the culprits even? Yes, um, it, it, it is not necessarily a new strategy because this is how they've been attacking in the past. They will come on bikes in numbering about 50 or above and attack unsuspecting villagers. Um, however, since the you know, swearing in of this current governor, he has done a lot in terms of, um, hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I was saying that the new governor, um, Matawale, has done a lot in terms of um, his peace and reconciliation initiative, where he brought together all the stakeholders, including the bandits, and uh, came, came to a resolution sort of and a peace agreement was signed. Mm -hmm. So that led to a massive reduction, almost about 90% of um, the, uh, the kind of attacks we were seeing previously. Uh, so this, this actually came as a surprise, uh, even though we know that about a month back, there were one or two uh, attacks and the indication was that it was some bandits who were not uh, part of the peace and reconciliation ag agreement. And then he had issued a warning and had ha actually held meetings with different stakeholders where he urged all, including the bandits who had embraced the peace agreement, to go after the non repentant ones. So, hearing that this type of attack would come from uh, a neighboring state like KB, it begs the question whether the northwestern states should have come together. Uh, to you know, do the, a, a general uh, sort of peace and reconciliation agreement. Mm -hmm. It also brings up the question how porous our borders are. Now, that leads me to my second question, because if you just mentioned that uh, Matawali has done a lot in terms of having to see this uh, kind of act activities do not occur again, why uh, are we still seeing this? Is there something that they're not getting right? The government of the state is still not getting right, because this is coming just two days after there was an attack in the, that same state, you know, and this is twice in a month. We're not even half the month, almost a month already. To call a state a state, the reality is that security, that is policing and defense, is still an exclusive reserve of the federal government. So any state-based initiative or regional initiative that does not get the full blessing of the federal government is likely to be completely successful. When Zamfara state government started its peace and reconciliation um, initiative, we encourage the federal government to support it because, yes, it was a good move. But remember that the Zamfara state government does not have um, the police. It cannot control the police, even though the police was involved in the peace and reconciliation initiative. But without the directive of the federal government, the police cannot take the initiative. So, yes, um, the move by the Zamfara state government was very good. But because the federal government was not completely involved, I think this is why we're seeing what we're seeing. Um, I, I was mentioning the issue of border control. The Amfara state government can do very little in terms of border control. It has to be the federal government. Then um, proliferation of small arms and light weapons. The, there is very little the Amfara state government can do. It's the federal government that needs to come in. Then the climate change um, implications that, that, and that is triggering the violence. It, there's very little the state government can do. It's the federal government that needs to come in. And in fact, even the federal government it needs to link up with other neighboring countries like Niger and as, as far as Senegal. 
All right. Uh, reports also indicate that you know police, mobile police force, and counter terrorism units and federal uh, special anti robbery squad, which is SARS of the Nigerian police, were deployed to that village. You know after the attack, as we would see in most cases, we always get to see these people after the attack. My question would be, why is it not the other way around? Why don't we have them on standby, considering the fact that that place has become vulnerable in you know recent times? So, I, I, unfortunately, the reality is that the current policing um, philosophy and even our national security strategy, does, um, until the review last last month in December, so was was not people centric. It was more or less if you have money or if you are influential, then you get some form of security support. But um, I think this is what this current government is trying to change with the, with the launching of the National Security Strategy 29 to make security more people-centric. Uh, in other words, um, the reasons why you don't have security deployment in villages uh, like the ones that were attacked in Gumi local government is because, I mean, the people didn't, don't have a say. Nobody caught, sort of would speak, is speaking on their behalf. But hopefully this is something that will change go, going forward. Um, the other component is uh, the kind of um, security structure that we have. We do not have light and easily deployable um, you know, units within our security system. So I, I, that's something that I'm hoping going forward, we would have that kind of rapid response um, capabilities within our security agencies. All right, let's move away a bit from uh, uh, um, Zampara. Now we have seen Katsina State banning the use of motorbikes as a way to curb insecurity. Do you think that is the way to go? Would that be the solution to the problem? Unfortunately, no. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it comes up with a lot of, you know, questions. How are they going to enforce that? Then more importantly, what alternative means have they provided for the people? The majority of the common, you know, people in Katsina State rely on motorcycles and tricycles to, for commuting from point A to point B. So what alternative arrangement? This is a state that does not have any public uh, transportation system in place. Uh, so unfortunately, the desire that we have for people to support the security initiatives is being defeated by policies like, like this. Even though I can understand what the state government is trying to achieve, but I think this um, measure is too knee-jerk in terms of the, the, the response, and it's not well, well thought out. Uh, they should have provided public means of transportation that would take care of you know, this requirement that I said that for ordinary people who use uh, the, the, the tricycles and, 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 and the bikes. Um, currently, that, that, that alternative measure has not been provided. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, en enforcement is going to be a challenge. Not too long ago, Last year, the military actually attempted to enforce that type of measure, but it wasn't successful because the, 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 there is no enough security personnel and the wherewithal to actually enforce that. So I'm, I'm not sure where, why the state government is, you know, thinking of this without necessarily thinking of how to enforce it. All right, before I let you go, still on security matters, still, uh, what are your thoughts on Amoteco, you know, even as the federal, uh, the AGF declares it illegal? Well, I'm a security professional, so I'm going to respond to your question from my standpoint, what I know. Um, it, the Operation Amoteco is a natural consequence of the weakness of the federal security ar architecture or arrangement to provide security across the, the country. However, my candid opinion is that the governors and the other Southwest leaders who were behind the initiative did not uh, take time to ensure that in, in coming up with the initiative, it conformed uh, with our constitutional ar arrangement. Currently, and like I said earlier on, um, security as it were, is the exclusive preserve of the federal government. However, there are several states that have come up with different security arrangements. But what they did is that their state assemblies came up with laws that supported those arrangements. And this is the first time we're seeing a regional arrangement and it's not backed by law. So despite the fact that there is a need as a security professional, I see Operation Amotekung as needful 
unfortunately, my understanding is that it does not conform with our existing laws. So I think the governors need to go back to the drawing board and ensure that the, the various state assemblies come up with laws to support the creation. And more importantly, come up with an operational guideline that is transparent. Currently, we do not know what the operational guideline of Operation Amotekun is. All right, moving forward as a security expert, what are the options you think we have to see a collaborative effort between the government and the people? Um, we already have the template, the revised Na National Security Strategy 2019 um, and endorsed community policing. So that for me is the tem template. And Im more importantly, we've um, attempted to introduce the community police in, in about 18 states already. So the mistakes that were made in those 18 states, we need to study those mistakes. We need to understand what we need, what, what are needed to correct so that we see a better and more enhanced community policing approach. The reality is that the federal policing structure has been ineffective in taking care of the various security challenges ac across the country. So this new template as provided under the revised National Security Strategy 2019 is the way to go. And I would call on all the various components of the national security architecture to study that, that document and to come up with an implementation strategy, beginning with the police, because remember, they are the chief architect of all of this. Um, we need to support them. And I think Lagos state government has a very interesting template, the Lagos State Security Trust Fund. It's a model that I'm encouraging all other states to study and use as a beginning point for this kind of interface between the organized private sector, as it were, and the, and the federal police uh, and other security structures that we have. All right. Thank you very much, Malam Kabir Adamu, for your time and speaking with us here on Plus TV Africa News on the Hour. Thank you very much for having me too.